we're starting this week's route and ride down at one of the probably the most popular tourist spots or tourist attractions down on the island of Tenerife. This is Siam Park. It's the water park um, that the people who actually own Laura Park, they're both the same company. They actually um, put this park together. It's got some massive rides, thrills, and that if you're into all that sort of thing, especially for the kids, it's a must go to if you're actually gonna come down here uh, or fly over here and uh, you're down on the south side. This is in Los Cristianos, Arona. Um, there's free buses down here, there's free passes. Go online, buy directly off the site, you'll get it cheaper than going to the ticket offices. So go online and buy off the site. So you can see it's 10 o'clock in the morning, starting to rev up down here already. This gets extremely busy. So if you do want to get down and you don't want to be waiting in huge queues, then it's better to actually get down early and enjoy the park for the day. The reason I'm starting from here is because today we're going to head off over into Puerto de la Cruz and we're going to go and visit one of the nicest parts of Tenerife, I believe. Um, we're going to take a nice route down there and then we're going to actually lap the island today. So we're going to go down the TF1. We're going to hook up with the fast roads in, into Puerto de la Cruz. We're going to stop outside Laura Park, give you the destination on the map for that one. You also, you'll get the destination for the for the water park here as well and then we're going to head off through the fast roads picking up the fast motorway creating a complete lap of the island bike of choice of course the rg that's all fired up and ready to go we've just gassed up cost me 26 euros to fill my tank 26 euros this cost me about 12 so let's get going off we go we don't need a destination, let's go where the river's taking us mm -hmm. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us mm -hmm. Over the rainbow If we hold tight, we can chase the Mississippi through the night Hundreds of miles away The water is warm Let's dip our toes right in and be reborn I don't know why we'd wait Grab some glasses in the atlas We can prove we're smarter than a phone So I've just come off the TF1 Through Santiago del Tide And now I'm just hitting these um, Kind of mountain roads which will take me back up into the fast roads to get over to Puerto de la Cruz. Now, you can see from these pictures that the south, which is that way, and then what we've got here is a completely different weather structure going on, which really is what Tenerife's all about. Each side of the island can be very, very different, which is why I often say to be careful when you take this road, especially if you ever take this road of a night time, because you can come up here and find yourself going through some heavy fog and some heavy cloud um, with very, very limited vis visibility. So this is the last stop I'm gonna make before we hit Puerto de la Cruz. We're gonna carry on through these mountain roads. There's about 20 minutes of these roads to get through until we come through to Al Tanque. Then we'll hit the mountain roads. We'll go through the, what I call the, the, south north, the South Northwest Tunnel, which really is the connection tunnel which will break us through into that side of the island. So onto the road glide, let's get going. We don't need a destination, let's go where the river's taking us. You have to be careful on some of the corners, because on this particular road, they're not switchbacks, they're actually full circles. And they kind of jump out at you a little bit, and you don't expect it to continue going round so far. And as I've said before in the videos, when you're riding the roads here, just, if, you, if you're not, you know, if you're not, able to see round that corner and slow down because you ain't going to find the apex because there isn't one it's a full circle now 
Now here, you'll see a lot of roadworks going on. They're actually putting a tunnel from Santiago del Tade right the way through to hook up with the fast roads and Erie Cod. When that happens, this will be a complete connection ring road of the island and it's going to make things a lot, lot faster when you want to travel from, say, the airport straight into the northwest um, or over to the other side of the island because there's only currently one way really to get there fast and that's on the TF1 north. And that road's pretty, pretty gruesome to be fair. There's a lot of accidents on that motorway. Very, very windy. Um, can pile up with traffic quite a lot. And you can see now the weather's getting pretty bad down here. We're starting to get a bit of rain. See, see how bad it really gets. That's the, the twists and the turns over. This is now Altanki that we're just making our way through. At the end of Altanki, we'll start picking up the fast roads again. We, we're quite high up still here, so we can be sort of sat in the clouds, which is why you can find the weather can be quite you know gloomy up here. But as we make our way back down towards the coast, you'll see it'll probably clear itself up again and uh, it's nothing really to worry about. So here we are now, just about to pick up on the TF5. Visibility's not too clever. Little bit of rain. So we made it, it wasn't the easiest ride today as you can see the weather can change so quickly and so easily and if we just look up into the mountains um, I'm actually just outside Laura Park now and um, you can see that the weather's still pretty cloudy on this side but look it's warm there's no rain there's no um, it, you know it's not cold you don't really need a jacket I've still just got this on because I've just got off the bike so this is Laura Park now this is one of the number one attractions for tourists again in there it's the animal embassy it has such a massive range of animals and they are really looked after well the dolphins the sea lions it's a full day out down here um, and again go online book from them and you can actually get it cheaper directly instead of going to the ticket shops there's um the train that runs from puerto de la cruz center right up here that's free so if you are in puerto de la cruz in the center you can actually come straight here on those trains and you don't need to pay they're uh, all included in coming into the actual attraction so puerto de la cruz well that's where we're going to head off down to next we're going to go down into the center i'm going to find a nice place to stop where i go usually have coffee and whatnot um, and then we're going to head off to go to the a nice little burger joint that i know um, where you can get some Really nice dinner, okay? So, off on the road glide, let's go.
Manchester Square down in Puerto de la Cruz. As I say, I've been coming down here for as long as I've been coming to Tenerife, really. Around 23 years. And for 23 years, I've been coming to this same coffee shop. I've seen it change hands. I've seen it um, turn into a really nice kind of ritzy 1920s cafe. Um, it's a great place. The square itself, you've got the kids park down here. It's always been a nice place. It certainly hasn't changed. And through all the pandemic, we're still here. They're still serving coffee and we're still having a great time. Puerto de la Cruz itself was one of the very first holiday destinations in the Canary Islands. In 1955, it was recommended by the National Tourism Site because of its tranquility and its recuperation benefits of actually coming down and holidaying down here. It was first recommended as a retreat. I think that was late, late in the 1800s, early 1900s. So you can see people have been coming here, flocking here for years. It's full of tradition still. They have lots of their local fiestas held. Um, the Virgin del Carmen, which is a, a huge procession where they come and burn the sardines. San Juan, um, amongst the Bavarian Beer Festival. Which, down here, you've still got the original fishing dock. And in the original fishing dock, as you can see, it's quite choppy there today, picking up that bad weather that we've just come through. But down here, you can come down in the mornings, you can sit and you can actually watch the catches being brought in by the local fishermen. It's a very traditional, very nice place, especially when you're on the bikes. Come down, you can get easy parking in the square and then you can relax and enjoy the place. Right now, I'm getting hungry. We're going to make our way up to a nice little burger joint that I go to down here. Not your average burger, um, well worth a visit. Another place there that we're going to see is the Botanical Gardens. And the Botanical Gardens, again, well worth taking a walk around whilst you're over this way. So when I come down on a motorcycle tour, what we usually do is stop off here, just by the botanical gardens, and we're able to visit a nice little restaurant here. It's not expensive, food's good here. There's also an Indian down here if you're staying overnight, you like Indian food, like me. But this is where we go. This is the Black Sea restaurant. They specialize in gourmet burgers. There's a, I can't their menu there. We're just gonna take a look grab some dinner before we head back off again. It's a nice little place inside, clean, friendly people, and you'll get a nice little bit of dinner in here. So I was gonna have a burger, but they're Bulgarians who own this restaurant. And um, I'm just taking a look at the menu. And as you can see, We've got a selection of Bulgarian cuisine as well. So I think I'm actually gonna go for the Bulgarian moussaka, because I've done the burgers plenty of times. And this one here does look rather special. So 
I've ever, only ever had like a, a Greek moussaka before. It's a little bit different, but lots of potatoes in. Um, it's like a pork mince with vegetables, peas, um, and then it's kind of an egg flan on the top. Um, it's very nice dish, very tasty. Different to a burger, well worth coming just for just for one of these. Mm. You know, very nice people. Um, really friendly. They talk great English, so you can sit down, talk with them. And do you know that cost me um, 16 euros? 16 euros. Do you know a meal, coffee, Coca Cola? Great. Look now, take a look over the road. This is the uh, botanical gardens. Now, if it's a nice day and you're over in Puerto de la Cruz, this is like five euros entrance to go in. And it is one of the most beautiful places that you can go and spend a little bit of time in. You can just go in, take a packed lunch with you, go and have a sit down, have a walk around. There's some amazing um, plants and stuff in there that you only find in these kind of tropical climates. So it's well worth going. Other restaurants here, over the road, We've got Delhi Dabar. That is an Indian restaurant that I use. It's very good. The Oliva is a Spanish kind of tapas tasca restaurant. And there, now that churreria, churreria, I think they say. Anyway, churros. We say churros. They do oversized churros, which is like um, a donut type of. Um, pastry dropped into hot fat sprinkled with sugar you really shouldn't eat them especially if you're the size I am but I have to go there at least once a month and just make sure that they're just getting that recipe right okay road glide time this is pretty much it for Puerto today we're gonna head now we're gonna do the ring road back we're not gonna go into Santa Cruz we're gonna move just past Santa Cruz and then get onto the highway. This road is a very fast road. It's the main motorway for Tenerife. It's the TF1 that we're gonna hook up with from Santa Cruz all the way back down into Las Chafiras. It's a fast, windy, um, it can be quite treacherous, you know, there's heavy traffic on there sometimes. You do have to watch yourself when you're on that motorway. Um, erratic drivers, that, that strange animal that we talked about called the tourist. So you do have to be very careful on that road, which is why I try to avoid it most of the time. But today, with the way that it's looking up in the mountains again, I'm not gonna head over the Tady. I'm gonna take this. This is, look, you get choices here. You haven't got to go mountain passes. You can go fast roads and you can get back okay. So um, off we go. Speak to you all soon when I get back to HQ. We HQ. don't need a destination. Let's go where the river's taking us. Mm -hmm. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us. Mm -hmm. Over the rainbow. If we hold tight, we can chase the Mississippi through the night. Hundreds of miles away The water is warm Let's dip our toes right in and be reborn I don't know why we wait Grab some glasses in the atlas We can prove we're smarter So that's it, back down at HQ um, We've just come down to see what the lads are up to We've got some bikes getting cleaned up And uh, whatnot. so um, That was uh, TF1 into Santiago del Tade, pick up the TF5 all the way through into Icod, down into Puerto de la Cruz. Um, we then stopped in Puerto de la Cruz, had some dinner, we went up to the Botanical Gardens, we left the Botanical Gardens, picked up back on the TF5 all the way through, down onto the TF1 and actually back round from north to south down the highway. Total time, well, it's taken me about three hours today, but that's with stops. And uh, I did have some other people to see whilst I was up in the north. Um, petrol, well, we've used half a tank, so that's 13 euros worth of petrol. That ain't bad for a trip around the island, is it? 13 euros. We stopped for dinner, which was 16 euros. So 29 euros. We've had a full lap of the island, stopped for some dinner. 
No, it's time for a good earned break, I think. So that's it for Roots and Rides this week. We'll see you next week when we'll probably be looking at the TF28 from the um, Arona all the way up into Santa Cruz.